You love Splatoon, but I'm willing to bet money you don't care that much about Splatoon's story mode. Today I'm going to talk about why Splatoon 2's story mode stinks a big one and what could be done about it. Why poor character development and the actions are more like a requirement in a story. Warning, this video will contain opinions. Alrighty class, take out your notes. Let's review what a story arc is, as well as some other things that help make stories good. You have a hook, an inciting incident, rising action, more rising action, the climax, falling action, and resolution. There's also scope, scale, and stakes of a story. Stakes being what's at risk, scale being how big the story is and how many people the stakes affects, while scope, for the purpose of this video, is what the audience and the main characters personally have at stake. For Splatoon 2's stinky story mode, the hook sort of is there. They're like, yo, it's the news, I'm Pearl and Marina, and the great Zapfish is missing again. Oh look, there's the green squid sister in your plaza. Great hook. The inciting incident is finding out that the pink squid sister has been kidnapped, and the green squid sister asking the player, also known as the agent, for help. Is there a rising action? What build do we have? I don't know. No, we should go do stuff because we gotta go get the big baddie DJ Octavio. Yeah. The climax is the Squid Sisters reuniting, which is basically this entire story anyway. And then everything resolves and the great Zapfish returns. The Zapfish continues to the massive scale, where if we don't have the Zapfish, it will affect all of Inkopolis. But wait, there's more. The player doesn't have to save the Zapfish, they can just walk up and play multiplayer. And I'm willing to bet money most alt accounts are made for ranked, not for Splatoon 2's story mode or for Octo expansion. So our hope, especially for returning players, is incredible incredibly lacking. Additionally, there isn't much at stake for players or for the new agent character, so there's no real scope involved. And to be completely honest, I had no reason to care. Even though I like Pearl, sorta, I don't care about the idols at all. You can talk about agents and idols, but why, after playing Splatoon 2 story mode, would I care? Antastic has done more to make people care about Agent A than Nintendo has. The idols feel to me like the Nike swoosh. They're an anthropomorphic logo. But Vian's boxies bring up the DLC for Splatoon 2 and Octo Expansion also had a poor story. Octo Expansion is an improvement level and story wise. The writing team did a great job creating high level of intrigue for the player trying to figure out what is happening. Good hook and good inciting incident. This is mirrored in Agent 8's quest to complete the phone's challenges. This creates a deeper level of scope as well since the player and Agent 8 together Together have to discover their purpose and find a way out. Scale is also there. Your Auckland character teams up with the most important and powerful peeps of the time to take down a big bad. It's going to wipe out all intelligence, squid, and octo life. At first, the scale doesn't appear to be too big. You are stuck in a subway, yet it progressively builds in that rising action over time as you uncover the mysteries of the deep. The sanitized Auckland, the phone's true purpose, and the reason for all the tests. But there's still still isn't much reason to care for the idol. Pearl and Marina just show up and like, yo dude, I'm here with my fancy technology and voice to save the- <laughs> Consider this. Do Pearl and Marina have anything personally at stake? Not really. In general, they're just kind of there helping out because they're bored. Does Agent 8 have anything personal at stake? Well, yes. If Agent 8 doesn't succeed, they die. There's no feeling of that personal vendetta or purpose in fighting the phone. Agent 8 has to fight or they will die. There's nothing personal about the fight. They have no vendetta against the phone and there's no purpose for them to want to take down the phone. They just need to to survive. And that lessens scope. Nintendo showed us they are slightly improving story, but they really need character development and something at stake for our characters or more scope. This would make us care a whole lot more. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for some juicy opinions, to seal the coffin on why the Splatoon 2 story mode and Octo expansion is majorly lacking. My instinct's a big one. If Nintendo didn't stuff Pearl and Marina down my throat via the news, Every time I went to play the game, I would not remember their name. One playthrough of Octo Expansion would not be enough to remember Pearl or Marina. I've never had the privilege of playing the original Splatoon and the original Splatoon story mode, so I don't know the Squid Sisters because I didn't have to watch the news every time I played the OG Splatoon. The story of Splatoon 2 was not memorable enough to have me remember their names. I had to Google the colors of 
the squid sisters for the purpose of this script. In Splatoon 2, assuming you head straight for hero mode, the green one acts as your guide. It's basically the tutorial mouthpiece. You can compare this to Clippy and Microsoft Office. The Splatoon! The pink one has an even worse off. She's basically the Princess Peach of the story. We gotta finesse her back to say we completed the story mode. I've played through this story mode. Yes. I even got the hero charger on a stream because I was incredibly bold. I remember the Squid Sisters' names. No, why should I? I'm not even going to bother using their names. In the Game Boy days, story and scope didn't matter as much. But in this day and age, in 2022, Nintendo, it does. I have zero desire to try Hero Mode or Octo Expansion in its entirety again. That brings me to something that isn't the idol's fault. The story takes a huge backseat to the platforming gameplay. Platoon's single player is set up much like Mario in its Game Boy era. A forum challenges across a few stages, boss. A forum challenges across a few forum stages, challenges boss. Across a few stages forum challenges, challenges across, across a few stages, stages boss. boss. I think it's something Captain Astronaut has mentioned in a video of theirs. Basically, I think it's an important to add a part here how story gives those menial tasks a purpose for the player. You push through the challenges to get some reward, typically more information about the world, character development, etc. But in Splatoon 2 story mode, we don't get that at all. Funny enough, this is exactly why I don't care that much about Mario games. There isn't much story, and I'm just kind of it about them. The selling point of Mario, of course, it's creative approach to stage design, but Splatoon lacks creative approach to stage design. Vasco underscore games underscore YouTube did a tier list for Octo expansion stages and was going to do a tier list on the story mode stages for Splatoon 2. But he said literally only two stages of Splatoon 2 story mode would have been above C rank in terms of design. Yikes. Anywho, Octo expansion is a bit of an improvement since it does make it a bit more rewarding to finish a stage. It was difficult at least versus super baby mode in main game. And you were doing stages to make visible progress progress towards a real goal. Fine. There's still room for improvement in that regard though. It still felt like a list of requirements. That's what Octo Expansion is. That's what Splatoon 2 Story Mode is. A list of requirements you can say you've done it. Platforming tasks with most of the story being dialogue boxes you gotta read. I think you understand. I believe that Splatoon 2's Hero Mode and Octo Expansion lack story and character development. But how Splatoon 3 could make the story mode better. Number one, characters have a personal stake in the outcome. Often, in good literature, character arcs will match up with the arc of the story so that the pivotal character development moment matches with the climax, the pivotal moments of the biggest story. Personal stakes help drive a larger scope, the big story, so we can appreciate the scale from a smaller scope. Number two, character development. Give the characters every character a want and a struggle that is in their way. AKA characters need a reason to be there and something to stand in their way. writing. This is summarized as character wants blank, but blank. You are familiar with this already. In Spongebob, Plankton wants the Krabby Patty formula, but Spongebob is in his way. For video games, in Animal Crossing, the new resident on Tom Nook's Island wants to enjoy the calm life, but you got a debt to pay. For Monster Hunter, people want to exist peacefully, but powerful savage monsters disturb the local ecosystem and threaten their safety. Let's go into the realm of predicting the future. To think of how characters in Splatoon 3 want blank, but blank. This could really help improve the story. Marina wants Pearl, but Pearl's father, Mr. Grizz, hates octolings and lesbians. Pearl wants Marina, but fears being disowned. Agent Chow, or whatever they're calling the new agent, wants to help, but cannot quit Salmon Run for fear of going hungry. The Salmonids and the Fuzzy Fuzzy Octarians want to be left alone, but Mr. Grizz and Marina's inventions have given them little choice but to fight for their livelihood. Mr. Grizz wants Inkopolis to prosper, but Inkopolis doesn't have enough energy. These personal desires of the characters directly feed into their struggle. Marina can struggle, ask Pearl to give up her wealth, and can ask Pearl to challenge her controlling father. Pearl, in that manner, is also struggling to defy her controlling father, who controls the entire city. Agent Chow struggles to openly oppose Mr. Grizz because they can hardly 
hardly afford rent, it was hard for the agent to help Pearl and Marina. The Salmonids and the Fuzzy Octarians are tired of all this fighting, yet they hate Marina in their soul. And Mr. Grizz in their soul. The climax of this predicting the future game is also the climax of the character where they overcome what holds them back personally in order to get what they want, which helps save the world. Potential climax for Splatoon 3, based on the character's wants we mentioned before. Marina finally stands up to Mr. Grizz. She builds DJ Octavio a giant mech suit to help end the fighting. Pearl stands up to her father and is locked inside a Grizzco rocket. Agent Chaos decides to help Marina and openly oppose Mr. Grizz. The Salmonids and the Fuzzy Octarians see Marina's change of heart and choose to back down in order to make it easier for the game to attack Mr. Mr. Grizz. Mr. Grizz obviously struggles in his resolve and puts his goals and his over his daughter. This lack of character development and shift in perspective makes him the enemy. But the viewers understand that it comes from the desire to preserve and protect the city of Igopolis. Upon the end credits, the rocket is destroyed. Pearl is rescued. Gigi Octavio puts Mr. Grizz in the snow globe. And we have a wedding as a resolution that shows the destruction of Igopolis as a new chaotic world order. Let's hope that Splatoon 3 has a good story. Always remember, no dying.